Mr. Paul Joani, the CEO of Turk Telecom from Turkey. Please, thank you very much. Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> uh, I would like in my short uh, talk here to uh, describe a journey which may be helpful for some to look at what the next three years will be like. We're not going to try to look beyond three years, given our start. I first came to Turkey around 2005, and since uh, today there's no speaker for Turkey, <coughs> I would like to uh, tell you a little bit about Turkey. In 2005, uh, it was a privatization of a company, and uh, one of the most interesting things that I tried to look at on entering the company was making some acquisitions of smaller companies uh, with the realization that to do new things, it would have to come from smaller working groups, and therefore smaller companies would be more capable uh, of succeeding in this regard, especially in the technology field. I distinctly recall that after making our first uh, three acquisitions in total, in the end four acquisitions were made, that were mostly in the technology area, you could say. Uh, we were having meetings with two European uh, telcos that looked at certain products. Uh, and in those discussions, I looked at what they had developed internally, having spent huge, huge amount of money from their research and development uh, uh, departments, uh, and I'm talking billions of dollars, and what was also interesting to compare is that these small acquired companies had developed these products and were acquired by, by uh, Turk Telecom at a fraction of that, which in fact was the real cost uh, of developing these products. And we also listed the company in 2008, and uh, you heard about what happened in 2008. One of my earlier experiences also in that regard was convincing management uh, to actually take shares in the company, meaning convert their bonuses into shares. And in some cases, we compel them to do so. Between 2005 and 2008, there was very little interest uh, domestically in investing even in the stock market. Typically, the stock market was about 30% local and 70% uh, were foreigners. After 2008 came a unique opportunity, in fact, with the uh, lowering of value and almost like a system reset, uh, we decided to push these acquisitions further. And in my own experience, uh, what I did after that is I left the company in 2011, <coughs> which was uh, just before the interest in early stage companies started to come into Turkey. Uh, by that time, the company had acquired a total of four companies. And I did leave the company, and behind were many people in the company who had shares in the company and actually earned what we were earning from that. It was an interesting experience. And I then had the experience of leaving uh, the company and making my own uh, investments and also generating co investments into uh, startups, quite a large number of startups, and also early stage uh, companies. And I was asked to return to the company in October last year, and during this period, I was very happy to see that the company itself, Turk Telecom, had a program called Pilot, which in fact is a form of angel investment. And what they've done is they have a, an interesting application process which results in a selection, and then these companies uh, have been supported by cash and management uh, skills which I intend to extend, actually, this into a, a more formal corporate venture capital approach, as you've heard earlier, as I believe that this is a very important uh, contribution, first of all, but also very important to the company itself. In relation to uh, the value of startups and what they can do, I think you've heard the, the British minister indicate a few things. In this particular market, what happened is that the Turkish government decided to introduce strong incentives for angel investors. Uh, unfortunately, these incentives came a little bit late for me, so I wasn't able to personally benefit from them. Uh, but I was 
very, very excited to see a very large numbers of uh, local business people and local entrepreneurs uh, invest their own money in this form. Uh, this has been a major transformation, I think, in this market, which grew heavily in 2012, 13, and beyond, where we saw uh, a lot of Turkish entrepreneurs getting money from Turkish uh, investors. And these were getting support from them as well, which is very, very helpful to these, to these companies. So the government introduced very, very, very healthy measures in that, which were basically tax incentives, income tax incentives at the, at the personal level. Also in Turkey has a very uh, favorable capital gain tax uh, structure, which in fact makes it even more interesting to invest because capital gain tax beyond two years are practically at a zero tax level. Obviously within two years, that's speculative, you pay a normal tax on that like an income tax would be. So that, so that the government have actually introduced uh, in, important incentives uh, into, let me say, into the market that uh, generates good opportunity for people to get money and also for investors uh, not to be unduly taxed. And we've seen other countries engage in this effort because they do realize that the future would have to come from these type of, let me call them early stage companies, which can encompass startups to scale up. Now, obviously, in relation to scale-up, this is a unique opportunity for corporates to support because when companies get to the stage where they need money like growth capital, now there, frankly, it's a no-brainer uh, for companies to move very fast into supporting smaller companies at that stage of their development in whatever form that support takes. It can be an equity in kind, uh, in exchange for a business support, it can be a cash contribution, meaning an equity participation. Now, clearly, there is no risk uh, without reward. Uh, there's no reward without risk. But the difficulty here that I would like to highlight is in relation to the employees as well, is that, that the personnel working in companies cannot be motivated uh, to develop these particular initiatives simply because uh, the risk element isn't there. I mean, if you have a secure job, you're not going to be taking that risk as seriously as someone who, uh, if the thing fails, ends up with nothing. And we have to face the reality is that many of these ventures are going to fail. It's just the nature of the, of the beast. And a lot of these young people who try, or even older people who also leave jobs uh, to try, uh, will go through the, to this loop once and twice, and in a joking sense, I was always telling uh, friends of, uh, of mine that I would prefer always to invest in someone after they failed once, because obviously they would have learned a lot of lessons. I think more importantly, uh, you would be giving them a second chance uh, to have a go at it. Uh, it could be the same or a similar thing. It's not really uh, that important. In any case, there will be multiple trial attempts, there will be failures, uh, but society and governments have to encourage these efforts. Uh, otherwise, new employment is not going to come from old companies. And, you know, when we use the word old uh, company, uh, I think most of us today consider Microsoft, for example, to be a very, very old company. I and mean, even Google now is beginning to sound a little bit old, uh, which is a little bit scary if you think about it, uh, that even these giant companies have this negative perception. I wouldn't include Google in the negative perception uh, part, but uh, certainly Microsoft now all of a sudden looks a little bit older and so on, which is really, uh, in a way, scary. So the speed of change, I believe, will accelerate further. Uh, what we have experienced, uh, people of our age, have to understand that the younger people will be experiencing even a harder level of change, uh, especially with artificial intelligence and machine learning coming into uh, every single aspect, even of information technology itself. It means that even technology sector is not immune from change. And what that requires, uh, besides the societal uh, importance of what society should be look at, looking at, uh, is also, in fact, new opportunities. Because in the end, this relates to what a basic customer needs 
uh, from a very basic service. And this new generation is going to be creating all of these new things to match their own uh, new world. And this is a world that corporates can play a very important role in supporting. Now, corporate venture is an easier decision-making process for a CEO and their his direct reports than an institutional fund, because institutional funds, as you know, have complex uh, investment decision-making uh, processes, which they must follow because of the high risk of failure. Hence, uh, uh, you know, companies like like ours. I mean, perhaps I I have had an interesting experience myself in investing my own money and co managing co-investments by other investors in the technology sector, and I also took a risk uh, into renewable energy, which was an interesting experience for me because that's a new area that I had no experience in. And uh, what was interesting to me, of course, is that I ended up succeeding in an area uh, that I had no experience uh, in at all. And if I would end this with, uh, with one thing, is that for corporates to try to invest in things that they are not doing and things that they don't really understand, things that they don't really know about. And one thing I notice about people is that they want to invest in certain things. Like you sit with somebody and says, I want to invest in FinTech and I want to invest in this form of renewable energy and I want to invest in one thing or another. Uh, keeping an open mind about what to be looking at uh, with a blank sheet of paper was the lesson that I learned. Thank you very much.